Okay, so what's up guys, this is Akshay here and today we're gonna cover a very standard and a very important algorithm in arrays. So there's a question here. The problem statement is uh, give an array of size n and a number k, we need to find all the elements that appear more than n by k times, correct? Okay, so here is some theory written about it. So do read it. Uh, pause this video here, do uh, give it a try to read it and then we can cover it uh, from scratch. Right. So let's discuss uh, the first and foremost approach. The brute force would be that you get the count of each and every element using nested for loop. Right. Uh, one loop for traversing, another loop for to get the count. So that would be method one of n square as time complexity and O of one as space. Second would be that you use a hash map to show the frequency of each and every element. So that will give you O of n as space and O of n as time. The third approach which we are going to discuss is is based on the Moore's uh, voting algorithm, which takes there is a time space trade off here. So O of n reduces to O of k, but the time increases with star k, right? Okay. So in this entire video, we're going to cover three questions to understand all the ins and out of this thing. So first we'll cover the questions of how we can find the n by two times using the Moore's voting algorithm. And then we'll cover the n by k, right? And, uh, and since the n by k is not present in the lead code, so we will first we'll generalize for n by k and then we will do the coding for uh, n by 3. Great. Okay, so n by 2 let us uh, let us take some uh, example. So let us take the example of this uh, test case, right? Uh, let us switch back to a uh, uh, editor. So that's the example. As you can clearly see, the frequency of 2 is 4 and the frequency of 1 is 3. Now n by 2 is nothing but 7 by 2, which is 3, right? Now there is one thing I need to say that when that what we are actually doing so we have been given a bunch of elements right or let's say what happens in election is that uh, there are let's say 100 votes to be uh, given to the parties in the election right and one uh, with the greater than n by 2 votes that is uh, it means that particular party has won by a majority if it has got n by 2 votes right so definitely only one winner will be there in this case one will be the uh, opposition and one will be the winner right so can I say so when I said or you can you can uh, visualize it mathematically as well so let's say uh, this is your 50 words and this is your 50 words right so greater than n by 2 that means one should get at least 51 words right then only I will say majority correct so that means the possible the potential the number of potential candidate can only be one here there will be only one winner right for n by 2 so can we generalize it if I say I need to find for more than n by k. So can I say that the potential candidates could be k minus 1? Right? The potential candidates could be k minus 1. Right? Okay. Okay. So having these two points in the mind, so let us do a dry run for this code. So how it is going to happen is so we have a, uh, here we know uh, for the n by 2 there is only one candidate. Right? So we will have a candidate variable. Right? Initially, we will point it as I will start with the initial value that is 2 here. So my candidate is 2 and I will also maintain the count that uh, that how many votes it has got. So it has appeared 1. So count is 1 again. Next time I see there is only again 2. So the count will increase to 2. Now next time I see there is 1. Right. So my candidate was 2 but the votes are going to or let's say the frequency is increasing for 1. Right. So adding 1 vote to 1 or I can say decreasing 1 vote to 2 remain same right so I will decrease the count of this candidate 2 and I will make it again 1 again I see a 1 so I'll again decrease it and now once the total count or let's say the total vote for the candidate 2 decrease to 0 then definitely I will now I, what I will do I will change my potential candidate right here that's what it is written here uh, when the votes become 0 please read this line and you'll get it right so now my candidate now my candidate would be changed to my 1 and again count would be initialized as 1. Now I'll again continue my round for i equals to 4. So I again, I again got a 1 so I'll increase the vote for 1 that is increase the frequency. Now I get a 2 so I will decrease the frequency of 2. Uh, the uh, can, uh, Decrease the frequency 2 of candidate 1 by 1 and I will to be 1. Again I get a 2 I will again decrease this frequency uh, by 1 and it will again once it reset to 0, then that means I have got a new potential candidate. So my current candidate was 2. So I will say candidate 2 and count is equals to 1. Now this is my potential candidate, right? I still have to verify that it 
does it really have greater than n by 2 votes or not right now why i'm saying so let's say your last element was let's say 3 here 3 right so n by 2 here nothing would be 8 by 2 uh, 8 by 2 which will give you 4 right and if i continue with the dry run so 3 the potential candidate is now uh, uh, if you continue with the dry run right so there is a new candidate my previous was 2 so i will again decrease it to 0 right and then i will say my next candidate is 3 correct but you can clearly see that there is none of the elements here right if we consider this array now there is no element which has the frequency and by which has frequency greater than 4 right okay so coming coming back to our previous problem so that's what that's that is that's the reason i told you that we need to check if our potential candidates has actually greater than n by 2 or not right so as of now the candidate is 2 and i will check i will i'll again use a for loop to check it and i can clearly see that the frequency of 2 here is nothing but uh, 4 and 4 is greater than 3 and that is why 2 will be our answer for this case now please pause this video here try to code this solution for the majority element in the lead code uh, given on number 169 and then you can proceed ahead with the n by k occurrences okay so that's the code in java let's do a very quick dry run so that's the result so result is nothing but assuming our potential candidate starting from the zeroth index so we have a count one for that particular uh, candidate and then we are iterating in the array and then we are checking if the uh, current candidate if it's equals to our potential candidate which we have declared then do the count plus plus else c minus minus and once the count has decreased to zero then update your potential candidate right result is equals to i now uh, once we are out from that loop then we got the candidate uh, 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 potential candidate right but then also we need to check if it is actually the uh, candidate which has the votes greater than or the frequency greater than n by 2 so that's what we are checking this in this for loop and at last we are just returning that candidate and if not we are returning zero so that is it let us hit the submit button so what is the time and space complexity here o of n right o of n here right because there was potential candidate was uh, equals to one here because we are solving for n by 2 right now similarly when we will solve for the uh, uh, greater than occurrences n by k then the potential candidate will be uh, it equals to k by 1 so similarly for this case also so n by 2 the potential candidates are 2 minus 1 which is 1 right following the same formula k minus 1 right so let us do a very quick dry run for the n minus k right let us take some more examples one sec so we will take example from this gfg uh, gfg question i will mention the link in the description do not worry and yep okay so something gonna change here right uh everything will be similar but since we're handling k minus one candidate so do watch it closely for the dragon right so now my first candidate or let's say the first element here is three right so i will i will just place three here and what is the frequency now one so this is out of k minus one potential candidates i have found one as three now second one is one again so i will place in the next available slots there there are two available slots for zero uh, one and two so i have placed one in the ne in the next available slot now again the count of or count of the frequency of the one is again one now the next standard is again different right so i will again go into my this k minus one size array i'll say if there is an uh, next available slot present then just place that element here and mark its frequency now what is the again two so it's two present in our k minus one candidate right uh, so it is there too so just increase the frequency of two again one is also there increase the frequency of one two again is there increase the frequency of two 3 is also there, increase the frequency, then 3 again is also there, increase the frequency, right? So, what we will do here is now, these are the potential candidates for which have the frequency greater than n by k. So, we will run an external for loop like we did here in the n by 2, right? So, we will run a for loop k minus 1 times and we will get the count. So, what is the actual count in the given array the actual the three count is nothing but or let's say uh, the count of three is nothing but one two and three the count of two is nothing but one two and three again and the count of one is again nothing but two so this is the count i have found from the manual dry run right okay now i can clearly see that here n by k n is nothing but eight k is nothing but four n by k is two so whatever so any element any candidate which has the frequency greater than 2 right which has the frequency greater than 2 so i can clearly see uh, greater than 2 is this one and this one and that is why 3 and 2 are the elements now 
let me change a little bit because this was very straightforward so let me add two more values that is four and four now what will happen in this case so i will continue my drawing from here i will see that there is one another candidate and the vote is going for this candidate four now i come back to my array and i see that there are first of all there are no available slots right so what i will do instead of giving one vote to four i will decrement the vote from all the potential candidates available to me so far so i will just decrement the vote so two and it is one and it is two again again i continued where i saw there is one vote again to four and again i see there are no available slots in a potential candidate so decrease the votes one this becomes zero and this become one again right so let us add one more element here and there is again four so now i again come to my potential candidate array and i can see there is again no ah no i can see that the count here is zero so definitely this position has been empty now right so i will replace this one with my new potential candidate that is four and i'll replace this count with one again right now this is my available potential candidates which may have the frequency greater than by k so i will again run a for loop for all for all candidates i will find the frequency so again i will find the frequency so three four and two now these frequency will come from the given array right so again i will see the count of three is one two three the count of four is three and the count of two is again three now the total elements here was 10 right so 10 by 4 will give you 2 correct okay okay so the elements here are not 10 it is actually 11 so 11 by 4 will give you 2 so definitely for this for this bunch of elements the answer should be 3 because every candidate has the votes greater than two so let us just quickly verify this from our custom input and output as well hmm. so i've created the same exact custom case i have i've just showed it in the dry run and you can clearly see the expected output is three so we are on a good track and again i'm emphasizing it here if you have not understood these two dry runs then do pause the video go back again and understood this dry run by your heart and maybe read this story as well and you'll be able to help you to grasp the concept more so once you're satisfied with the dry run and the logic and the intuition behind the working of this concept then again pause this video and uh, try to code this solution right so one hint i will give you so for uh, for n by 2 we we knew that there only, there only one potential candidate and that is why we just made one variable cand and we were storing each and everything there right but here we know that there are k minus 1 candidates right so instead of making k minus 1 variables we will make an array of k minus one size now there's enough hint now let me give you a code walkthrough you also tried this code i hope you have tried this code okay so we have a pair which is actually store which is uh, uh which is storing the element and its count so i'll be very quick now so we have fitted all the uh, we have made a pair array array of pair type uh, of k for k minus one and then we are visiting for each and every uh in this cell and we are marking the count as zero and we are initializing the element as as of now it is your min min value. you can initialize it anything you can initialize here minus one as well because the constraints here is going from one to one but in the lead code you can see that the constraint is going from minus 10.9 10.9 so you need to initialize the candidate such that it is not present in the constraint so that is why i have initialized it in general min value okay now we are tra in tra traversing in the input array and we are checking that if i have a, if it is already present in my potential candidate we are just incrementing the count right if it is not present in the, then first place it in the first available position that's what we are doing in the dry run right so this is actually handling that part and if all the positions are filled decrease the frequency by one so that's what if l like we have started from the end this l right so th that is handling here if, if you have reached the last position that means you have not found any available positions for a candidate to fill in so you decrease the frequency of every candidate by one now at last you need to check that if your potential candidates actually have the frequency more than by k right so that's this is the a trickier part you need to understand this as well again i've explained this in the video so yep so what would be the time and space complexity so you can clearly see that every time for n array we are doing for uh we are doing the pre processing for k candidates so it would be n star k and o of k as space complexity great 
yeah so that is it but one more additional information i want to give you so we have got a tle right so when we got a tle is that uh, n star k is the time constant right so n is pointing to 10 power 5 and k is pointing to n that is 10 power 5 If you do 10 power 5 to 10 power 5, it will be 10 power 10. In order to get your code a successful submission, you should code your solution in less than 10 power 8, less than equals to 10 power 8, right? So this is an approach you must know, right? That's why I have explained you. But in order to do a successful submission on the GFG, you can just use the hash map code, and you can do the submission. Yes. So do not make it, do not make it a practice. You must know this technique that moves voting algorithm, and that is what would be expected in the interview. Here the constraint was set in such a way that I had to use the hash map solution. But again, you need to know the solution. Now, the same thing we will do in the lead code now. So here the constraint is not uh, that strict, and we will be able to do it, right? So n by three, right? So here k is three. So please generalize the approach for the k times, and we will use the same code as we have used in the GFG platform, right? Everything remains same, exactly same. I'll just scroll it through for you guys. So yeah. That is the submit button. So do not worry. I will mention the source code also in my description. That is it, yeah. That is it. So I hope you like the uh, content, and I hope you have understood the solution all by your heart. So uh, do like, share, and subscribe. Support our community, and then connect me on any other social media platform. That's the link will be in the description again, whatsoever. And let us meet again in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Keep learning and take care.